So similar. He literally has the same pattern as him. It's the, it's the kitten hen of the kennel for the park. one of our strong pre-workouts before my training sessions. I like this pre-workout because it gives you a nice steady flow of energy without feeling tingly or itchy and it's watermelon flavor so it's really refreshing. Now let's go to my favorite gym warehouse for a hamstrings and glute session. So I prefer to do my warm-ups on the exercise that I'm going to be doing during the session. So I've just done two sets of 20 reps of RDLs on the barbell just to get those hamstrings nice and warm. And the first exercise of my session is hip thrust. So I'm putting 60 kilos on the bar and that will be my warm up. So I've made sure that I've propped my bench up against the squat rack. This is just to stop the bench from traveling backwards as I lean on it. It's really important to find somewhere that you can prop it up against if that's a wall or some weight plates, because otherwise you're gonna be traveling halfway across the gym during your set. So we're quite lucky in our gym because we have three different types of benches and I find that this bench is the perfect height for hip thrusts. I think there's like two of these benches that have these specific feet at the bottom and when it's hamstrings and glutes day, I am hunting this bench out. The other ones I find they're just a little bit too high and it does get a bit uncomfortable to align the bottoms of my shoulder blades with the edge of the bench. So I'm just putting on our strong barbell hip thrust pad. This is really important to use because you really want to make sure you've got a lot of padding so it doesn't feel uncomfortable when you're thrusting up that weight. So I'll do around 20 reps. And what I like to do is mix it up between partial reps and full reps just to get the glute really fired up and warmed up for the session. So you wanna make sure that you align the bottoms of your shoulder blades with the edge of the bench. You wanna keep your shins vertical. You wanna push through your heels and squeeze the glute for at least a second at the top of every rep. You can either keep your chin tucked like I'm doing, or some people I know do find it more beneficial if they come right back onto the bench so they end up looking at the ceiling. You just have to play around and really see what works for you. And then on the last rep, I like to hold it for a few seconds just to intensify it that little bit more. So I did four sets total and my rep range was between six to eight. I'm keeping it fairly low because I really wanna keep my strength up and increase the intensity with increasing my weight. So my sets were 100 kilos for eight reps. hundred and twenty kilos for six reps a hundred and thirty kilos for six reps and then I took it up to a hundred and 
40 kilos, which I didn't think I was gonna do in this session, but Romain pushed me and I thought, you know what, I am going to give it a go. Okay, so before I'm gonna lift like a really heavy weight, I always just need to sit here, catch my breath, just tell myself that I can do it, make myself believe in myself, and that's what I'm doing here. <laughs> and I really surprised myself because I managed to get five full reps. That last rep, I didn't think I was gonna get it, and then I managed to lock my hips out of the top, really get a good glute contraction, and five reps. I was like, okay, I nearly didn't do this set. What the hell? And yeah, I was super, super happy with this. Woohoo! Sometimes you just need that little bit of spurring on from someone to make you push yourself and not underestimate yourself. Okay, so now we're moving on to sumo deadlifts. So this exercise is going to help target your glutes and your hamstrings. I like to use lifting straps for my compound movements because I really find that they help with my grip. They help me lift heavier as well. And they also allow me to get those last few reps out when my grip wants to give way. There is nothing worse than knowing you can get those last few reps and your grip giving way and you having to put the bar down because you just cannot grip the bar anymore. I'll link these below in the description for you. So I personally prefer to do a little bit of mobility just before I get into my lift. It's just personal preference. I find that it's more time efficient and I can also use the bar to hold on to to really kind of like rock myself side to side to loosen up my hips. I don't know if I explained that properly. Hopefully I did and it makes sense. But yeah, I just feel like you need to just play around with things and always see what works for you. So I'm gonna do four sets and my reps are gonna be between six to eight reps. And what I really want to achieve is to get back up to my PB, which is 85 kilos. But that's not gonna to be today. <laughs> So with this one, you wanna go as wide as your body allows you to comfortably. Then you wanna turn your feet out just a little bit more than 45 degrees. Make sure the bar is either touching your shins or very, very close to your shins. Then hinge forward from your hips and grip the bar. Then you wanna sit your hips right back and you're in more of an upright position in the sumo compared to the conventional. Make sure your back is flat and pull your shoulder blades down. Then take a big breath, keep everything tight, and pull the bar by driving through your heels. Pull the hips in, squeeze the glutes at the top, and then lower the weight. There's actually a wide sumo stance, a mid sumo stance, and a narrow sumo stance. So play around with each width and see which one works for you. So now on to reverse lunges, which is another great exercise to hit the glutes. And I did three sets of these, aiming between six to eight reps. Take a big step back, keep your back straight, and drive back up, pushing through your front foot. And of course, repeat on the other side. So now onto straight leg deadlifts. This is a great exercise to isolate the hamstrings. Admittedly, I do struggle with this one because my flexibility isn't the best. So I like to raise the bar up onto two plates because that just really helps me to know where my range of motion isn't compromised. Because what I don't want is my lower back rounding. But in an SDL, the bar has to come all the way down to the floor and touch the floor. So by raising the bar up a little bit, it just helps to keep my form on point. 
so you have less of a knee bend compared to a conventional deadlift and you want to lean your torso over so it's pretty much parallel to the floor your feet need to be about hip width apart and your hands need to be just outside of your knees Okay, so now onto the line hamstring curl. Obviously, everyone knows this is a great exercise to isolate the hamstrings. I always like to jump into the machine, do a little test rep on a fairly light weight just to see if the setup is okay for me before I dive in to my working set. And what I like to do with my line hamstring curl is go until failure. So I put it on a fairly hard weight and I go until I can't go anymore. And then to make it more intense, I like to do negative reps, which is where I'll release the weight super, super slow for about five seconds, really put in a lot of stress on that hamstring because my hamstrings are stubborn. So I wanna make it as intense as I possibly can. And then I finish up with some 45 degree hypers, which again is a great exercise to hit the glute. So adjust the pad so you can lean over without your lower back rounding. Turn your feet out roughly around 45 degrees. Make sure the top of your back is rounded like a hunchback. Okay, this exercise isn't supposed to look pretty. It is pretty uggers, but it's effective. And as you lift your torso up, Drive your hips into the pad and squeeze the glutes at the top. Yeah. 